like to go. <laughs> Alright, so you're probably wondering what's going on today. I thought we would take a look at Roman military gear. Okay, what the legionnaires were wearing. These, these guys that ran the army, what, what were they doing? Okay, what did they have on? What did they wear? What did they carry? Um, how did they live? Now, the life of a Roman soldier. We're going to take a look at that today. There's lots of cool stuff I'm going to talk about and some cool stuff I'll show you. Okay, I actually have artifacts to show you, things we can take a look at. Alright, so... If you wondered in the morning why I was dressed up like this, that's why I do this every year. I kind of like to surprise my classes. Okay, the faces you guys have when you walk through the door is like priceless. Okay, it was so worth, it's worth, I'll tell you guys right now, this is not the most comfortable thing in the world. How do you like get that on? No, I, I, we, we put this on when I got here. It took Mr. Brown and Mr. Sank, the three of us, to put all this on. Oh, no. It's just like, wait, the okay. this. But, um, so we'll talk a little bit about this today. We'll see how much we can get in. I know it's, Early release today, but um, we've talked a little bit about the Roman military, right? And you guys know the Roman Empire is a powerful place. It's powerful. But they didn't get like that just by being inventive and creative. It took an army to conquer what they had. I'm going to take this off for now. That comes off. It's very hot. No. <laughs> Not right now. Is it actual metal? Yes. You your hairy metal. Huh? It's probably all messed up, huh? Yeah. No. No? no. Um, the Roman military for its time was the most feared and impressive army in the world. Nobody had an army that could touch what Rome had. And there's some reasons for that. First of all, um, they had a professional army. It was a professional army. What that means was you got sent to be trained to boot camp. You actually went and were trained in all the ways to fight for months. They prepared you to fight. Okay, it wasn't like they just grabbed people off the streets and said, come on, let's go fight, here's a sword. You know, think about it. If I, if I just gave you guys weapons and sent you out to fight, how would you do? Not if I said, go march 40 miles and go fight this enemy, what would you do? Yeah, see, no. They trained you for that. All right? This army was the first professional army in history. We model our army after it today. We kind of, we've kind of taken some of their traditions and we still use that today. And as a result, they were feared, they were respected. People did not mess with the legions very often. The only time you, you really, you know, we saw one instance yesterday when someone went up against the legions. Who was it who went up against them yesterday? Utica, right? And they almost won. Okay? So, um, you know, what made it so great to be in the army? Well, there's lots of things. Um, first of all, they were a volunteer army. By that I mean you signed up to become part of the army. Okay, they didn't, again, they didn't force you to. They didn't say, hey, here, you're coming with me. You're going to be in the army. You chose to be in the army. When you think about it, that kind of makes sense. If you're forced to fight, are you going to fight very well? No. No. Okay, these soldiers wanted to be on the army. This is what they wanted to do. So they were there to win. They wanted to do this. So it made for a really powerful force. Okay, if everybody's there and, and, and all together wants to do this, we're good. Um, what you got after you were done with the army was even better. But the problem is... You had to be in the army for 25 years. That was how long you were in. Once you signed up for the army, you were in for 25 years. Now, who's got family in the army or military? Anybody have family? How long are they in for for a tour? How long was a tour? You guys know? Two years. Is it two? It may depend on the branch, maybe. Two or four. Two to four, some, somewhere in there. All right, yeah, that, that's bad enough being away from your family and from your home. But these guys were off all over the empire and beyond for 25 years. Okay? Most of them started when they were 16. So by the time you got out, you were probably close to 30 or in your 30s somewhere. Um, still plenty of time to have kids and get married and all of that. Okay, but the cool part about this was once you were out, you got free land. The emperor gave you a giant chunk of land to do whatever you want with. Uh, you were paid on top of what you normally pay. You got what's called a pension. You got paid after you were retired. Okay, so that was a big deal for people. If you were a plebeian and didn't have much to work with, the army sounded like a pretty good idea. You got all this free stuff afterwards. Yes? So, like, you would, like, if you were in the army, which you had to be for 25 years, would you, like, retire at, like, age 30 something? Whenever your service was up, whenever your time was up. Every year 25 was up. Now you've got time off. You'd have a, mo a couple months here and there. You got to go home. You could take, you do whatever you want. Just like in modern day, you could go home. It's you know for leave. 
Okay, but you still had to come back. And if you didn't come back, you became a fugitive. They'd hunt you down, and guess what the penalty was for deserting? Killing. Death. Death. Oh, yeah. They'd kill you, yes. Okay, they did not mess around. Okay, so what did you need to sign up? Well, first of all, you had to be a bachelor. You couldn't be married or have any attachments. Why do you think they wanted you to be not married, at least in the beginning? Why do you think that was the case? Why do you guys think that's the case? Yes. In case, like, during the war, they found, like, a lady that was captured or something, and maybe they had to go to Maybe. But there's another definite reason of why they didn't want you, you know, want a girlfriend on the side or a wife on the side while you were doing this. So that if you died? No. They didn't care. The Roman army didn't care about that. They weren't well, worried about that. No. So you weren't thinking about them in the war? Yes. They didn't want you to be distracted. If you were distracted, you weren't doing what you were supposed to be doing. Okay? And some of these guys, if they were really distracted, if you had a girlfriend back home who was writing you about how sad she was, you might actually leave and go run back to her. She'd be cheating on me. <laughs> what? No, probably not. Oh, yes. No, no. Okay. Um, you had to have a healthy body. You had to have all your body parts intact: fingers, toes, legs, arms. You know, you had to have good eyesight. And they didn't want somebody who couldn't see. If you were missing an eye. You wouldn't want. They wanted everyone to have all their all their eyeballs. All right. No, no eye patches. Um, you had to have good character. In other words, you could not be a criminal. You couldn't have been in jail, and then, you know, even if you were free again, you couldn't, they didn't want anybody that had been a criminal. They didn't want anybody like that. And they'd check up on you. Um, they did not want slaves. If, if an escaped slave tried to join the army, they'd catch you and they'd kill them. Okay? Um, now, if you wanted, let's say you were maybe from a patrician family, and you wanted to become an officer someday, what you would do when you came to the, to the to the army camp to be trained is you'd bring a letter of recommendation. It's kind of like in modern day when you get a job and you have somebody write you up a, a nice letter telling them all about you, right? Um, your officer would look at this and go, ooh, they're from a rich family, they've got this, they've got that. Um, that might get you further ahead. Okay, now is that the fairest thing in the world? No. no. Okay, that's not how our army works today. Our army, you get, you, you move up the chain by how well you do. Right? Right. Well, back then, it was kind of who had the money. If you had money, you could become an officer. It happened all the time like that, but a lot of times, that was how they would do it. Now, imagine if you aren't that great of a soldier, yet you become a general, what's going to happen if you try to lead an army? What might happen? It might, you might fail epically. Like that guy that went up against Boudicca, remember that guy at first? And they yeah. slaughtered him? Yeah. He didn't know what he was doing. Okay. So that might not always work. Okay. There we have some soldiers, some soldiers training there. Cardboard. Well, not cardboard. We'll find out what that is. Um, now, there's one other group that might join the army. Let's say Rome has has conquered a territory. What they would do is offer up uh, a place in the army for men, young men and, and men that had, uh, of that conquered place. Barbarians, basically. Non-Romans, they would offer them a chance to join the army. And there's a reason for it. It's sneaky. It's kind of like brainwashing in a way. Okay, so that the men of that new place wouldn't rebel against Rome and cause them trouble. They'd actually, they, it was kind of like, well, you know, join us and we'll give you free stuff and you'll get to learn Latin. And when you're done, you'll become a citizen of Rome. You'll have all these privileges. And to a barbarian, that sounded pretty good. Land and money and Roman citizenship, sweet, we're in do this. So over that 25 years, they learned Latin, they learned how to think like a Roman, so that when they were done, they'd basically be Romans. And any kids they had would be, would be raised as Romans. So that was how they kind of conquered conquered uh, enemy territory. They let them join the army. And it worked. Pretty sneaky. Yes? Um, I forgot. Okay. Not a problem. Okay. Um, now, when you went to military camp, when you went to military camp, um, you would have to take a test. It didn't take just everybody. They had to check you out. Uh, the test was called the probatio. Kind of sounds like probation, right? Be on probation. 
Okay, Probatio. And the doctors would check you out. They make sure you had all your stuff the way it was supposed to be. Make sure you were healthy. You didn't have any diseases. Um, they look over your letter of recommendation. Um, if you were passed, if you passed this, then they would line up all their recruits and they would give you the military oath that you had to take that, 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 that officially put you in the army. Yes? I remembered. Um, that one uh, picture that says, like, uh, I want you to join the army. Is That's that not real. No, that was fake. That's when you put that together. Yeah. But, uh, oh. That's not real. Uh, that was just a, a joke kind of thing. All right. Um, I'm going to read the oath to you guys. You want to hear this? Yeah. All right, so it, they would have heard this in Latin, obviously. This is in English, but here, here's one of the actual oaths they'd have to take, all right? Step forward, recruits, and swear by the various gods and unbreakable oaths that you will follow your commander wherever he may lead you. You will obey orders enthusiastically and without question. You relinquish the protection of Roman civil law and accept the power of your commanders to put you to death without trial for disobedience or desertion. What's desertion? Leaving. When you leave without permission, yes. Okay. You promise to serve under the standards for your allotted time of duty and not to leave before your commander discharges you. You will serve Rome faithfully, even at the cost of your life, and will respect the law with regard to civilians. Civilians are ordinary, ordinary citizens. Okay, you're there to protect them. And your comrades in the camp. Congratulations. You are now a soldier of Rome. And boom, just like that, you're in it for 25 years. That's it, you're done. No going back now. You're in. Okay? So every one of them would have to take that oath. And once you're in, you're in. You belong to the, to the, to the Roman government for 25 years. Okay? So what would you do as you trained? Well, first of all, you'd march and march, march, and march. And just for fun, we do some more marching. Bless you. Okay, you marched with all of the equipment you see on me right now, all the weapons, all the pack, all, all the things that they had to carry. We're talking 60 to 70 pounds worth of stuff. And you would march 20, 30, 40 miles a day. Okay, on all kinds of terrain, in the mud, in, on roads, in, in, in the fields, uh, going uphill. Uh, and they did not have shoes or boots like you'd be used to today. They wore sandals. Now imagine, I don't know if any of you guys have ever done this, have you ever been to Cedar Point? Yeah. And you wear sandals the whole day? What happens to your feet? They hurt like crazy, you get blisters, you know, ouch. All right, but imagine doing that for hours at a time with all this stuff. And you're marching fast, you're not just kind of, you're not just like, you're marching, you're, you're, you're moving quick. Okay, so by the time, you know, by the time their boot camp is over, they have these, these heavy calluses on their feet. Their feet are real tough. They don't even feel it anymore, okay? Um, and it was to build endurance, okay? You're carrying all this weight, and by the time you're done with training, you don't even feel it anymore. Your muscles have built up, and you're like, yeah, you can fight with all this stuff. Yeah, I can carry Okay? Um, you learn how to swim, how to run, how to jump, how to do all this heavy lifting. They taught them all the engineering skills we talked about, how to build roads and how to build forts and, and all of that stuff, how to use the tools to do it. Each one of them knew how to use all this stuff so that they got to where they were going, they could build the forts together. All right. Um, when you train, you were given a special, um, a, a, a wooden sword called a runus. It was a wooden fake, kind of like a fake sword. They didn't give you the good stuff until you were trained. And you had a shield made out of wicker. It's a wicker shield. That's all they'd give you to practice with. They're not going to give you the, goods, the good stuff until you're ready. Okay. And you would train for months, for months. So they were sure that you were you were ready to go. Okay, there we have some training going on. All right, they're practicing throwing their javelins. We'll, we'll learn about the javelin a little bit later. Okay, anybody ever throw a javelin? Usually we see them in the Olympics, but that started with Rome and Greece. Okay, um, some possible places you might go into as you train. Yeah, they had some different areas you might go into. One of them was called the cavalry. Do we know what cavalry has to do with? Horses. Horses. Okay, maybe you were good at riding horses when you joined the army. Maybe you had skill in it. Um, they would use that, and you might become a horseback soldier. Okay, that might be where you'd go. 
Um, they had another group called the Auxilia, which was where all the folks that weren't Roman citizens yet, yet would go. So all the barbarians or people that conquered or whatever would all be put into that, and they'd get the most dangerous jobs, they'd get the most dangerous assignments, you know, so the Roman citizens wouldn't get killed. They'd, they'd put these guys in, in harm's way first. And the legionary, or the regular Roman soldiers, that would have been us, you know, me, dressed like this, we would have been the, the, the most, most numerous, okay? We'd be on the front lines fighting, that's, that's who, where, where we'd be. Now, let's say you're a terrible soldier. Let's say you stink at your job. Let's say you're, you're not that great. Um, they might stick you in the Navy. In the Navy, right? They wouldn't, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't push you on the land. They'd push you out to sea. Nobody wanted this job. No soldier would select this as something they wanted to do. The Navy, the Romans were not very good at fighting at sea. So nobody really wanted to get stuck on a boat for months at a time, for weeks at a time. Um, what they would usually do is promise slaves. They would actually beg slaves to join the army. We'll free you if you join and, and work with us for five years. We'll free you. You can go free. And most slaves were like, sure, we can do that. Okay. Now, the best of the best soldiers, though, if you were the best of the best, you might become a Praetorian guard. The Praetorians were stationed in Rome. They were the emperor's bodyguards, the best of the best. Okay. And those are the guys that followed him around, that kept him out of trouble, that protected him from any evil doers that might try to kill him or assassinate him. Okay, so these are the different places you could go as a Roman soldier. Okay, um, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of the gear. Now that we're back from lunch and we're all focusing back on right? So we're gonna take a look at the gear that a Roman legionnaire would have, would have carried around. Um, what you see here are the basics, but there was so much more than just this. Okay, so I have some things to show you guys. You'll be able to touch some stuff, pass some stuff around, all right? Um, everybody in the Roman army had this equipment. Everybody was equipped with the same stuff. You didn't get extra, you didn't get less. You all had the same thing. What if you were a general? Or like um, well, if you were a general, I mean, you had a lot of the same stuff, but you, 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 didn't, you weren't one of the extra soldier soldiers. You, you, were, you were commanding and taking telling people what to do. So you didn't have all this stuff. You could fight. Some some generals did fight with their men, but most of it was defense. All right. Um, so uh, you had several main weapons that you carried with you at all times, and the main weapon of a Roman legionnaire was his sword, which they called the gladius. Okay, the gladius is the short sword. They call it a short sword. Okay, and it wasn't it wasn't like one of those giant Hollywood swords you see those massive swords with like, ugh, knights fighting. They didn't have that. Okay, they fought close combat, close you know face to face, you know hand to hand. And this was the actual gladius. Oh my god, that's sharp. Okay, it's well no, this is a, this is just a, a replica, so it's not sharpened up like a, a sword. I mean, I can hurt somebody with it, but we're not going to uh, be handling it. But um, this was the sword. You know, you could you could slash with it. You could stab with it underneath somebody's ribs. Okay, it was it was your weapon. They didn't, they didn't have guns. They didn't have any of that stuff yet. This was your main weapon of choice. This is what you carried around. Uh, if you lost this thing, you were in big trouble. Okay, this is what you fought with, and they weren't just going to give you another one. Okay, um, you'll notice that it's 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 made of steel. Okay, it's a steel blade. Um, you you'd usually get a plain. Plain old vanilla flavored sword when, when you became part of the army. They would give you one. Now, if you went up in the ranks um, and you made enough money, you might actually have one made for yourself, a, a custom made one. It would have possibly designs etched in, okay, or you'd have your name etched in there, you know, specialized, and the, the, what they called the hilt here would be very fancy instead of just a wood handle. You, you get it done all fancy. I'll come around and show you guys. Oh, I won't hurt you, I promise. Don't Don't be scared. Don't hurt you. All right, you kind of see. Don't, don't touch. I, I would never hurt you guys. No, we won't touch it. Just look at it. Okay. We'll just look at it. Okay. Kind of cool. This is just a training sword. Okay. Yeah. We were not going to combat with this. How heavy is it? Uh, I will pass it around with, with, the, with the sheath on. You guys can feel how heavy it is. Okay, when I we're done. Okay, I'll, I'll give it, I'll show you, see, this is for the camera. This is our gladius right here. The short sword, the Roman short sword. Okay. Um, 
me not to take it out of the sheet. I will pass it around you guys and actually hold it, okay, to feel how heavy it is. It's got some weight to it. All right, do not take this out of the sheet. Okay, be very careful with it. Okay. The other weapon that you would get while we're passing that around was called the Ipugio, which is a funny name, but when you look at the actual weapon, it's not so funny. The Pugio was your dagger. And it was a smaller version of the short sword. It would usually hang on your belt, your, your sword would hang on this side, your pujo would hang here. Okay. It's just a smaller version of the, of the sword. It's a dagger, it's a steel dagger. And this was for like real close to close combat, you know, hand combat. If you lost your sword or somebody was right up in your face and you couldn't get in on them, you'd use your, your, your dagger and you know, deal with them that way. Yeah. Okay, so just a smaller version. Oh my God. We won't pass this one around either, just for obvious reasons. Okay. All right. Um, so those are your two big weapons. There was one other weapon that you would carry with you that was issued to you. You probably saw me holding it at the beginning of the day. Okay. Um, my spear, or what the Romans called the pilum, or pilum, 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 pilum. pilum, pilum. All right, this was the pilum. You had to make that. No, oh, wow. no. Um, this is basically a javelin. How many guys have seen a javelin in the Olympics, right? When they, when they, it's like a spear that you throw long distance. They used a javelin for a weapon. Okay, and some of the guys that used them could launch them up to 50, 100 meters if they were good enough. Okay, we're talking, you know, you had to have an arm on you. Okay, and I don't know if I'll be able to get it off right now, but you can actually detach this. Okay, you would actually be issued this at the beginning of the battle. Somebody would have this on a cart somewhere, and they'd, they'd pass them out to all the men, and you'd actually assemble it, and you'd be ready to go. Can you, like, throw that and lose it, or...? Uh, well, after the battle was over, you'd have somebody go out amongst all the dead bodies and collect them. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> clean them off. Clean them off. Okay. I forgot to mention, with the sword that we're passing around, um, you know, they did get bloody, and you'd have to clean them off as quickly as possible. Why, why would you have to clean them off right away? What would happen if that blood stays on there? It'll well, it won't stain. It will dry. It'll rust. Yes, we don't want rust. You, if your sword rusts, it looks bad, and your commander will be very upset with you. So is that like when you have like a rusty knife, and it like kind of like blood on it, and now it's like all messy? Well, it doesn't just do it right away. Okay, and just so you guys can see, you, know, you would throw the pilum like this. Okay, and it has a weight. It's weighted to both ends. Uh, we're not throwing it. <laughs> We're not throwing the people today. Today? Yeah. Not tomorrow, not any day. Can we touch the dagger? No. With its cheese pump. No, no, no. It's too dangerous. Okay, there's the people. Too dangerous. All right, the shield. Okay, which they call the scutum. Okay, the scutum looks like this. Okay, now this is a smaller version of the scutum. Most of the scutums would have been, you know, if you put it on the floor, it would have been up to about here. They were big, okay? It's made out of steel. It has a wooden handle on the back, all right? And you would hold this up like this. You'd have your sword out, and this would be your defense. This is what kept you from being killed by a barbarian, okay? This is what you had to defend yourself with, okay? Made out of metal, okay? Now, back then, they would have had leather padding on the back, so if anybody slammed into you, you wouldn't get totally beat up. You'd get, you know, you'd have something to pad you, but there's another reason they padded it on the back with leather. Ooh. Anybody want to guess why? Uh, so the arrows like That's one possibility, yeah. It had it arrows had more to actually go to stop the arrows quicker, yeah. Anybody else have a guess? In case you try to Well, you could do that. You could take your, your shield and, and smash somebody upside the head with it, sure. Or bring it down like this. On somebody, sure. There's another reason. It's, it's actually much more, much more of a relaxed reason you use your shield with, with leather padding. Oh, you sleep on it. Anybody know? You'd sleep on it. Okay. At night, if you if you weren't in a camp, you would actually you would lay your shield down. You would unscrew this this piece, and there was leather padding. You'd lay on that, and it was much longer. So it was something to lay on instead of the dirty, you know, cold ground. 
Kind of, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, if you guys would like, we can come up here and, and, and try try lifting this. If you want to line up, you guys can try this out. Come on up. All right. Yes. Lift it real quick and pass it on. All right, and then sit down. Let's bring it over here. All right, go ahead. Lift it up. It's heavier than it looks. <laughs> it's almost as big as you. All right, pass it on to the next person. We don't have too much time left in the period, guys. So let's. I want everybody to have a chance to give a shot. No, it, well, it would have been bigger than that. So it might well have been as tall as you. Okay. It's heavier than it looks. Okay, pass it on. Guys, pass it on. We only have a short amount of time together here. <laughs> and if you face this camera, we can get you guys on camera doing it. Right? You're, you're timing the legions. Right? What are you wearing? What are you, ninja, are you a ninja today? What are you wearing? <laughs> now, of course, as a soldier, you would be used to carrying this thing around after a while, so it wouldn't be that heavy. But imagine marching 30, 40 miles a day with that in your hands. After a while, that would get kind of heavy. It's got weight. Yes, it is. It's not very heavy. Yeah, it's not very heavy. Oh, it's heavy after a while. You carry that around for even a few minutes, it was heavy quickly. Well, you've got, you're using both hands. They didn't use both hands. Wow. Oh, I can't count it. I lift that one. Well, it's not so much lifting at once, it's keeping it lifted. You can hold that throughout the whole battle and get attached to your arm. <laughs> classes can see what it is they were using, but, you know, mm -hmm. Okay? All right. Next is the helmet. Okay? Every, every legionnaire had a helmet. He called the Galea. And this is just a, a replica. This is not the full, the full meal deal here, but, you know, you would wear it. Did you make that? It would be, it would have padded leather inside. No, I bought this. So if you padded with leather, it would fit very tight to your head. So it would be on there real tight. It would not move. Um, there'd be chin straps at the bottom here that you'd strap. This would be on your head, very tight. And if you got hit in the head, you wouldn't feel it. You know, it wouldn't be like if you got hit with a sword in the head, it, would, it wouldn't really move. You, you would hear it, trust me, your head would be ringing, but you would be alive. You would be alive. You would be dead. You wouldn't have a sword sticking out of your head. Okay? So these were very important. Um, you will notice that, that, that this one has something this one doesn't. The red, the mohawk. Blue. The mohawk. The mohawk. The mohawk. Yeah, yeah. Um, does anybody want to guess why? Why? Who might have this red plume? Roman. Germany. Who might? Who might be the one to actually wear that red plume? That red head. No, no, no. no. <laughs> oh, the, the it could be the general. Okay, it could be an officer. Um, normal soldiers did not wear these plumes. These plumes were for officers, so you could see where the officer was on the battlefield. If you were looking for more instructions or further instructions, you want to be able to find them quickly so they had the red plumes. Not only that, it just looked more intimidating. Okay, if you're out there fighting barbarians and they see this guy with this giant red crest on their head, they're like, oh, oh is that man. Made of was that like grass? No, uh, usually it was, I believe it was horse hair. 
like from the tail of the horse, or they cut cut some of the hair off, or the hair fell out, and collect that, and they'd make, I believe, it wasn't, they didn't have like synthetic, you know, it wasn't like today, where you buy, it wasn't a machine made thing. Okay? All right, next up is the armor. Okay, what I've got on right now is called the Lorica Segmentata, or lobster style armor. And it's called that for a reason. If you've ever seen a lobster before, okay, have you ever noticed the plates of the lobster and they kind of overlap each other, don't they? Yeah. Right? Well, the Romans figured out that instead of just having one piece of armor, if you had little thin strips of, of metal that overlapped, it actually made it stronger. Okay? And you know, little thin thin strips, you know, like this, what is it, what does that give you? Flexibility. Flexibility. You can move around, you can bend. Okay, they, they flex. Okay, my arms can, can lift up somewhat. I still can't reach up very high, this is about it. <laughs> okay, but still, it'd be worse if you just had one big piece of armor on. You'd be like this, you know, your sword couldn't like, really move. Like that kid that one Christmas movie. Right, it's okay. Um, so that was what that was all about. It is about, it's about 20 to 30 pounds extra, so I've been carrying this around all day. I'm losing some weight today, which is good, you know? Okay, um, but that's not the worst of it. Underneath this armor, to keep you even further protected, you would have this stuff called the Lorica Hamata, or chain mail. Have you ever seen chain mail before? Yeah. I even have seen it in Minecraft, I know. Um, chain mail is kind of neat. What it is, it's an entire long shirt made out of little tiny metal rings that are all woven together. Almost like they knitted it together, but it's out of metal instead of yarn. All right, and um, it's very flexible, but it's very, very heavy. Now, what's the purpose of chainmail? Um, chainmail allows you to basically take the blow off something that would normally kill you. Okay, so they wear that underneath this armor. So let's say you took an arrow. I mean, an arrow could possibly go through it, but um, you're more likely to slow that arrow down between your armor and, and the chainmail. So really, it would, it would kind of stop that from happening. You had a better chance of surviving an arrow hit with chain mail. Okay, if somebody hit you with a sword, again, um, it would kind of slow that down and not make it a lethal hit. Um, have we ever, ever seen, uh, um, what am I thinking of here? Uh, bulletproof armor, bulletproof vest. Yep. Right, a modern day bulletproof vest is used, and, and basically what, how that works is when a bullet hits hits a person, and, and you know we don't want that to happen, but if a bullet hits a person, it uh, goes right into them. Well, with bulletproof armor, what happens is it hits the padding, and instead of hitting it in one place and putting all that force into one place, it spreads the force out over the whole, the whole suit, so that all you get is a really bad bruise instead of a, a, a hit, a, a death, right? So this kind of works the same way. It spreads out the, the force of whatever hits you over that space. So instead of getting killed, you just get a nasty bruise. I can tell you guys this from personal experience. Uh, when we had a group, uh, we had a, a group called Black Talon come in. They, they did medieval uh, armor like this. They actually, they actually let me suit up. I wouldn't say they let me. I actually begged them to suit me up. And I got to fight with this guy, and I actually had had this armor on. And he hit me with his big staff, and I could feel it, but it didn't hurt. But later on, I had this giant bruise from that, just from him hitting me in one place, like all over my chest. So, But it, it was better than getting hit and going down and hurting really bad. Make sense? Right? Cool. Okay, so that's 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 the uh, the gear of the Roman legion. That's kind of the stuff they wore. They had a ton of other things that they would wear. Uh, they carry with them. I'll give you guys a couple examples of some things they carried. We're gonna pass this up. We'll get back to this later. This is kind of cool, but we'll talk about it another time. The ballista. Oops. Okay, with you. When you marched out in, in, into battle, when you marched away from home, um, you had to take everything you needed to survive with you, okay? Um, so you had to kind of pack it and take it with you on the march. And to do that, what they had was this big long stick, kind of like this, called the furka. And the furka would kind of hang over your, your, your shoulder like this as you marched, and everything would hang off the back. You have all this oh, stuff hanging down. Oh, it's like that yeah, kind of like the, the cartoons you see when someone runs away from home, right? They got the pack and so it's like a like a handkerchief on the end with all the stuff in it, right? Right. Um, so some of the things you would have in there, 
you know, any, any, you had a set of like a cup and a plate to eat with. Um, you had a, a pan called a, a patera that you would actually eat out of. I'll show you guys what that looks like in a minute. It was like your, your cooking pot. Um, you would also carry this thing here. It's called a dolabra. How many guys have ever used a pickaxe before to chop up a, a the ground? Okay, Minecraft, we know what a pickaxe is. They had a version of that called a dolabra. Remember, we talked about the Roman army and how they were also engineers, right? They'd have to stop and build roads, they'd build forts, they'd build all these different things. This was their main tool to do that. You could use it as an axe, you could use it as a pickaxe, you could do all kinds of different things with it, you could shovel stuff up with it. This was their tool. Okay, so everybody had one of these. Okay, your cloak. Okay, I, I am wearing, I'm not wearing a real cloak. This is unfortunately the, the, the costume deal. Uh, I'm working on getting a real one, but the cloak was one of your important things too. All right, it was made out of wool, heavy wool, so it was thick, and it kept you warm, especially when it was cold. Okay, if you're marching up in northern, you know, northern Europe somewhere in the middle of winter, okay, and you've got this, this, this thin, you know, deal going on down here, you want to keep warm. So you can wrap this around yourself. Um, they rubbed oils into it, and it was waterproof. So you had a waterproof cloak. Kept you dry, kept you warm. All right, that's all the time we have. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Yeah. You guys enjoyed some of the stuff we showed you?